Okay, so welcome to this next video in which we are discussing synaptic vesicle fusion. So, okay, so far what we have seen is the formation of the complex of proteins which is involved in docking at synaptic vesicles at the presynaptic membrane i.e. in attaching these synaptic vesicles to the presynaptic membrane, but not, not fusing them together. And that's very important because we only want them to fuse once the action potential arrives. So, now let's discuss how, when an action potential arrives, you actually couple the arrival of the action potential to the release of neurotransmitter, i.e. the fusion of these synaptic vesicles which are docked at the presynaptic membrane and therefore in this readily releasable vesicle pool, how you actually cause the two membranes to fuse and the release of neurotransmitter. And then we'll discuss the different types of fusion. All right, okay, so, uh, what we now want to discuss, therefore, is an action potential. So, let's say um, we have here our axon terminal. So, here is our axon terminal again. So, basically, when an action potential arrives in the axon terminal, what it's going to cause is it's going to cause depolarization of the membrane of the axon terminal, basically. So the uh, electrical potential difference will depolarize. Now, what that's going to do is it's going to activate certain channels in the membrane of the axon terminal. And these channels are voltage-gated calcium channels. Okay, so where should I write this? Voltage-gated calcium channels. Okay, and they're specifically voltage-gated calcium channels of the N or PQ type. So, voltage-gated calcium channels. And by the way, to save time, voltage-gated calcium channels are often abbreviated to VGCCs. Oh dear, not like that. VGCCs, voltage-gated calcium channel. Okay. Right, now, I just said that these voltage-gated calcium channels in the axon terminal are of the N-type or PQ-type, and I want to try and give you some intuition for what that actually means. Okay, so, voltage-gated calcium channels, then, they are not just one protein. They are a whole bunch of proteins stuck together. However, there is one subunit of this great uh, complex of proteins which actually has the hole uh, through which the calcium ions permeate the cell membrane. And this is known as the alpha-1 subunit. So, let me cover this in. So, the protein structure which actually um, sits in the membrane and allows ions to move through it is the alpha-1 subunit. And I've drawn this in pink here. So, basically, there is not just one alpha-1 subunit. There are multiple genes in the human genome which all code for alpha-1 subunits. They all have different sequences of organic bases which all are, have lead to slightly different proteins, but the proteins that they make overall are similar enough that we say that they do the same thing, well, they do do the same thing, and therefore we classify them all as alpha-1 subunits of voltage-gated calcium channels. But they do fundamentally differ. So, there are actually 10 genes in the human genome which code for these alpha-1 subunits. And basically, whether you are an N or a PQ-type voltage-gated calcium channel, what this means is it means you used a specific alpha-1 subunit to make your voltage-gated calcium channel. So if you're N-type, what it means is that you used the CAV, so voltage-gated calcium, 2.2 gene. So you used a specific gene to make your alpha-1 subunit if you are an N-type voltage-gated calcium channel. And if you are PQ-type, it means that you use the gene CAV 2.1 to make your alpha-1 subunit. And basically, in the axon terminals of neurons, we only find voltage-gated calcium channels which have their alpha-1 subunits made from either the CAV2.1 gene or the CAV2.2 gene. So we only find N-type or PQ-type voltage-gated calcium channels. That's all that means. 
Right, now, voltage-gated calcium channels have more than just the alpha-1 subunit. They have a bunch of other subunits stuck onto them as well. So one of the other subunits will stick here, okay, and this is the gamma subunit. So we have the gamma subunit stuck onto the alpha-1 subunit. So I'll show the gamma subunit in turquoise. Okay, so this in turquoise is the gamma subunit. And then down here, we have another subunit stuck onto the alpha-1 subunit. And this is the beta subunit. So in orange, we've got the beta subunit. And then finally, one more subunit up here. This is the alpha-2 delta subunit. Okay, and it's called the alpha-2 delta subunit because it actually consists of two subunits. The alpha-2 subunit is this box at the top here. Okay, the delta subunit is that portion that uh, uh, spans the membrane here. So the line is the delta subunit. The alpha-2 subunit is that box at the top. Now, basically, when uh, the electrical potential difference across the membrane depolarizes, these voltage-gated calcium channels, they will be activated to open. Now, when they are open, they conduct calcium ions. Now, calcium concentration in the extracellular fluid is very high. It's a, well, not very high, not when you compare it to the sodium concentration in the extracellular fluid, which is um, 145 uh, millimolar, uh, but um, it's 1.5 millimolar, okay? So, um, it's, it's, it's not that high, not compared to the sodium concentration, which, as I said, is 145 millimolar. But when you compare this to the calcium concentration inside, which is 100 nanomolar, then that's massive. So, uh, basically, this one is 15 times, uh, sorry, not 15 times, 15,000 times bigger than this one. Because 10 times this is 1 micromolar, okay? Uh, this is 1,500 times bigger than a micromolar. Therefore, overall, it's 15,000 times bigger than this. So this one is 15,000 times more concentrated than the intracellular concentration. So when you open this channel, you effectively have a massive great calcium concentration out here, okay? and you have a tiny little calcium concentration in here. What is the probability that a calcium ion on that side is gonna hit the channel on that side and then just happen to permeate through? Far 15,000 times roughly greater than the chance that one of these down here will hit and go through that way. Obviously you have to take in other factors such as the fact that there might be an electrical potential difference across this membrane, well there will be, uh, which is going to influence these particles' decisions as to whether they want to move through or not. It will make them slightly less or more likely to move in their respective directions. But when you compare that to this 15,000 fold probability difference, the electrical potential isn't going to going to change the direction the calcium wants to move. It's not going to be able to beat that 15,000 fold concentration gradient. So you're going to get most definitely a movement of calcium into uh, the cell. Okay, right. So what we have done now, therefore, is convert an electrical signal an action potential into a calcium signal within this axon terminal. Calcium is going up in the cytoplasm of the axon terminal, and that's going to cause changes within that axon terminal. Now, these voltage-gated calcium channels, they're not just homogeneously spread in the membrane of the axon terminal. Instead, the alpha-2 delta subunit is responsible for positioning these voltage-gated calcium channels of the N or PQ type nearby the docked synaptic vesicles. So it appears that the alpha-2 delta subunit binds to some of the machinery involved in docking the synaptic vesicle at the presynaptic membrane, and therefore sequesters these N and PQ type voltage-gated calcium channels nearby the docked synaptic vesicles. So when an action potential arrives in the axon terminal, what it's going to do is it's going to activate these voltage-gated calcium channels. They're going to open and basically they're going to spray calcium onto the machinery uh, that is docking the synaptic vesicle. Okay, and we'll see what that calcium does to the synaptic vesicle in the next video.